Hello everyone, my name is Eric Bry. I'm here at Mercy Sound Studios. I'm here with Plugin Alliance and I'm super excited to show you their newest plugin, the Lindell 50 series. So I'm very familiar with the um, API sound. It gives you that bite, um, the crunch, a little bit of that punch, that modern punch that, uh, that I love. And also it gives you that nice high end with a tight low end. So this plugin is, is perfect for the mix that I'm doing right now. So I got this session the same day Plugin Alliance contacted me regarding the, uh, the Lindell 50 series. So I was like, wow, this is perfect. This will be perfect for the mix. Uh, so I have a session here from a Florida based artist named Andre Sierra. This session is a, has a little bit that up tempo, old school feel has a lot of that uh, grit and, and aggressiveness. And this plugin is just perfect for that. Let me play you the song before we dive into the plugin so you get an idea how the song sounds like. So let's dive into it. So the Lindell Challenge Strip is separate in five different parts. And we have the bus plugin here. So in the first part, we have the preamp. The preamp is based on the 512 uh, transformers and 2520 up amp. And one thing that I love about this preamp is that it has the uh, THD features. One thing cool about the THD feature is that it gives you the sweet saturation and added character to the sound. Now, let's move on to the EQ section. And you know what? The cool thing about this is that you're not just stuck with that EQ, specific EQ on the channel strip. You could actually switch modules. So from a three band EQ, you could actually switch it to, the, uh, to a four band EQ, which is the 50B. And for precise boosting and cutting, you could use the 10 band EQ, which is the 60. And all these, all these modules are based on um, the API 550A for the three band, the 550B for the four band, and the 560 for the 10 band. Right, moving on to the compressor section, we have actually two compressors in, in this channel strip. So you could uh, choose between the FET, which is based on the uh, 525 API, which is one of their 500 series. And then we could switch it to a VCA, which is based on the 2500 uh, compressor, which is one of my favorite compressors out there. On to the next section, we have the gate and expander. And of course, the uh, TMT, which is one of the unique features that Plugin Align has in, in their channel strips. Uh, it makes a subtle difference between each channel strip, but it makes a huge difference as a whole. And then we have the master fader, and then the bus. All right, let's check this plugin out and see how it does. So what I'm gonna do now is just, I'm gonna solo each instrument part and then we'll see how, uh, how the plugin reacts to each, each sound. So right now I have the kick soloed. I have the EQ bypass as well as the compressor um, bypassed. Uh, now, if you, if you bypass the whole channel strip, you could hear that little uh, muddiness of that kick. So what I did was I cut a little bit of that low end up to like 48 hertz. Then I EQ'd. More about a little bit on that, about four, four or five dBs. At 31 hertz, a little bit at 63. Then I, I boost up a little bit just to give you that oomph at like 250. 
and they're not 4K giving that smack a little bit. And just by doing that simple, and just by doing that simple EQ, you could you could already hear the difference. That's before, and that's after. And that's just working the EQ part of it. So now let's add a compressor. So what I did here, I did a little bit of the fast attack because you know you 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 want to capture that uh, trenches of the kick. Fast release. Pull down the threshold a little bit and just add a little gain. And you can see it here, the uh, compressor is just kissing the kick just a tad bit. But it makes, it, it, it brings up the kick just a little bit more. So now if you bypass that, that's before. And that's after. And what, what, one cool thing about this plugin is that it doesn't alter the, the sound of the kick, uh, the character of the kick sound wise. So uh, it's a super clean plugin, um, but not sterile. So it's true to the source. So whatever you hear, whatever uh, coloration the kick has or, or, or character, it, it retains it. Right, so now let's move into the snare. So the snare is um, has about five parts of snare here, stacked. So what I did is I bust the snare. So let's bypass the plugin again to see how the snare sounds originally. So now, as you can hear, so what I did here is I, I cut out, I cut out a lot of the low frequency up to 220 hertz, and then maybe boost around like I boosted around 250 to give it that body, and then lowered a little bit high. So if I click. And bypass it. Now you hear the difference between is before he, before he, he keeping the snare and after. Before and after. And also you have to you have to also listen to it as a as a as a whole to see how the snare um, actually sounds as sounds in the mix. And this is just without a compression. It's already sounding good. So let's try to add a little compressor in it. And again, not too much compression going on. Um, just a little kiss, just to give it that. Just to have it mix uh, the snare uh, stand out a tad bit. I'm gonna turn back the other uh, instruments. Now, on the drum bus, I basically what I did is just I, I um, added. Um, the channel strip of the drum bus, so I could use a little bit of that compression. Uh, I didn't do anything on the EQ. But if you, now if you bypass the compressor on the uh, drum bus, versus with the compressor, now you give it that oomph. Give it that, it brings it up a tad bit more. All right. Uh, now let's uh, let's listen to the bass. See the uh, the bass was recorded pretty well. 
Um, so all I did was basically just tone shaping and how uh, it fits the mix better uh, and how it coordinates with the drums. All right, so. Uh, all right. So the so the bass is a little bit muddy, and again, like 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 the kick, you hear that lower rumble, which I don't really need in this particular mix. So what I did is I cut up to 170 hertz of it, and if you bypass that, I'll, I'll bypass the EQs for now. See if I bypass this filter, you hear it right there. And in the EQ section, I boosted a little bit of the high mid filter up to 1, 1.5 K, and then cut a little bit of the low mid and more cuts on the uh, on the low frequency. I'm gonna bypass the EQ to hear what difference it makes in the sound. So it cut a lot of that muddiness. And I did I did add a lot of compression. I did uh, now let's go to the compression compressor. I used the VCA uh, compressor which uh, I particularly love on this bass. Now, j j just those little adjustments, you could hear the tightness of the bass. That's before, and this is after. And now if you hear it with the drums, The cool thing is that I'm not even leaving the channel strip plugin. I'm staying in it. I'm not going out there searching for other plugins to cut and boost. Everything is right here. And when you, uh, the cool thing is that if you want more precise cutting and boosting, you could just switch it to 10 band and go back to the four band, whatever your heart desires. All right, so let's move on to the instruments. Um, so there's a few, there's, quite a few uh, string parts in this song. Um, we also have three acoustic guitars, a piano, and a xylophone. So uh, when, when it comes to uh, strings, what I usually do is that I just um, cut a lot of that low end. So let me solo that uh, string section. All right, so here it is. So what I have here is that uh, I always like to give a little bit of that movement uh, in the string section. So what I did, I just put the bus plugin on the uh, symphony bus where I routed all the string instruments. And instead of uh, automating Pro Tools uh, fader, I automate the uh, Lindell 50 series bus fader. This way, when uh, if I want to like increase the overall volume of the strings, I would just do it in uh, using the uh, Pro Tools fader, without worrying about affecting the uh, the automation at all. So as you can see, you uh, you, uh, you don't see a lot of that low end going. This way, your bass, which I'm gonna be playing at the moment, and drums could cut right through without getting affected without muddiness.
it. So now let's uh, take a listen to the guitar. The guitar was a bit challenging for me because uh, it was very dynamic and I really want to keep the feel and the vibe of how the guitar player was playing it. And let's, let's give it a listen. So just... So there's two parts. So that sounds really beautiful, and you know, um, you don't you don't need to do a lot with it. Um, so what I did here was. <clears throat> on the rhythm guitar. All right, so now this is the, uh, the guitar that you could hear uh, in the sides. Now, what I did here was Again, I cut off a lot of that low frequency, which you don't need. Now, let's, let me just bypass the EQ part. Now, the channel strip as a whole. Now, you see a lot of that low end, which will, will interfere with the bass. Now, you know, so what I did here, I cut about 500 hertz of that. And then... Cut off a little bit of high since since I want the string to to stick out a bit more. So I cut up a little bit of the high, a lot of the uh, high mid frequencies, boost a little bit of low mid frequencies, and then uh, cut off more about 9 dB around 400. So we just that. So we just that little adjustments of of, of a four band EQ. You, may, you can already hear the difference. So this is with, and this is without. So you, I want it to sound clean without killing the character. And as you can see in the compression. I didn't do too much. Now, when it comes to the lead guitars, I did the same thing. I cut off a lot of that low, low frequencies. Just, and just a little bit of notch of that high mid filter, around a hertz. And I cut a little bit of about 1 dB, around 15K. Because the guitar was recorded super bright. So I did cut about 2 dB of that. And again, not too much in the compression. And, and what I did here, I just ride the fade, uh, I just automated the fader to keep, to keep that feel of the guitar. If I need louder parts, I just uh, automated the, the fader up and for parts that I need low in the mix, I will just dip the fader down. Uh, this way I, I'm not killing the dynamics of the guitar. And now let's hear everything with the instruments and drums, guitars in the mix. One thing I love about all of the uh, plugin alliance challenge strip plugin is the uh, the TMT feature. 
with that, it gives it a subtle difference in sound between each channel strip. And that subtle difference makes a huge difference collectively. So basically after, uh, after I'm done tweaking using the channel strip plugin, all I do is quick all, and it will give you those different variations, which is super, super cool. You know, just like, just like a, 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 a real console, not every channel uh, strip is the same. So let's listen to the vocals without the plugin. I'm gonna bypass the channel strip so you could hear how it is originally. Time to ascend, cause I've been through hell. I'm from Angels fan, where few dwell. Must he gotta see a rock the heaven suit well. As you can no hear there, than me. <laughs> Do tell. Do fell upon it's the a little bit muddy. It's a lot of low end, which I don't really blame. want. I spit straight fire, how the damn magma made So what I did here, I'm gonna bypass the EQ part of that. Biggity bang, biggity and the compressor. Bang, bang, bang. So what I did here is uh, I cut a little bit of that low end. Let's bypass that. Listen, tactics from the hard necks in the damn. And just by cutting about 200 hertz, you could hear just a huge difference already. Uh, so just by cutting a little bit low, low end, you could hear the difference right away. This is bypass, and this is, and that's just the preamp section. Now let's move into the EQ. What I did there, I cut more of that low end, about 200 hertz, and then. A little bit around 700. I boosted about to about 3 dB and an 8K, and I give it that little higher piss about about 2 dB. At 12.5k. So it, it would just give it that a little bit of life. See, this is without. And this is when it's already tweaked. And now I, I used again the uh, VCA compressor. Not too much going on. Time to ascend, cause I've been through hell. I'm from Angels fan, where few dwell. Must he gotta see a rock the well, head for so well. No a girl I use about me. <laughs> three milliseconds of attack. Duration is about 4.1. No and I really, really, really fast release since the, uh, you wanna catch those little biggity phrases bang, that she biggity says. Biggity biggity bang bang, use the wrong words. <laughs> you wanna plug the hangman on my own army, I ain't with So as you can see here, from the not too much going on. On, but it's already making a difference. This is and this is after. So basically do that through all the vocal tracks with a different uh, setting of the EQ. Now let's hear it as a whole. So now let's hear the song without the plugin. Now I'm gonna I'm bypass all those plugins. Did this is before. And this is after. I really had a blast uh, using this plugin on this mix. A lot of praises to Plugin Alliance for coming up with, with another great plugin. I mean, truthfully, this is all you need to mix uh, aside from uh, effects and other uh, coloring plugins. All you need is just one channel strip to, sh to shape the sound that you want in the mix. I literally just use this plugin across all tracks without using any other EQs and compressors. Hope you guys will enjoy this plugin as well as I do. And happy mixing.